And Jay, what is the EU outlook? We talked about the UK outlook for GDP and uh, growth prospects, uh, but uh, how, how's the EU looking uh, post-Brexit? So what we did um, after Brexit, we marked down our Eurozone forecast a smidgen. Uh, we still have them growing this year, not as fast as before, because they will take an export hit. About, um, as Jeremy said in aggregate, um, about 7% of the EU 27, the people outside uh, the, the UK, their exports go, about 7% of those exports go to, um, to the UK. And as, uh, as the UK economy weakens, that will take a hit on, uh, on an exports uh, from the Eurozone. Perhaps the investment climate weakens a little bit, but you know, so in general, we're looking at the Eurozone growing you know, maybe one to one and a half percent this year, uh, maybe a little bit stronger next year, but still relatively you know, muted sort of outlook. And what happens in Brexit and, and the EU? Is it, is it coming here to the United States? Or are, we, are we having a, a slowdown here, or is it, is it the contrary? So if you look at U.S. exports to the, to the U.K., it's only about 4% of our exports, and then as a percent of GDP, and only 10% of our exports, or only 10% of GDP is exports. So you're looking at less than a half a percent of GDP. It's just not big enough to cause a recession here in the United States, or even a market sort of slowdown. I mean, we have slow growth here in the United States, but it's not because of, you know, because of negative exports to the UK. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And John, as you're running the, uh, the company and you're looking at, at this, um, wh where's, the, where's the opportunity now? Hmm. Oh, what a good question. Um, well, I think uncertainty is always helpful in some ways because it, you know, it does create some opportunities if, if you're bold. I think it's about being bold. Um, so if, you, if you're thinking, can you develop certain markets maybe in an asset light fashion, for example, you don't actually have to put manufacturing down, maybe you can sell to them, maybe you can export to them, maybe you can do different things. Um, our, our European business is actually growing pretty quickly. Uh, and funnily enough, I think the, the sort of old, I guess middle Europe, as you would call it, is still a pretty large opportunity for a number of businesses. A lot of us are underdeveloped there. Um, I think within the UK, you just have to think about can you remain competitive and can you get the sort of, um, as I said earlier, I hate to repeat myself, but can you actually generate the margin? Mm -hmm. uh, and how long, how long are you gonna have to wait? Now, if you believe the pound in three to four years is gonna come bouncing back, because you know, there's a nice Goldilocks environment here where the UK has negotiated effectively on the trade agreements, the French have decided not just to take revenge, but have actually been reasonable in terms of the way they're gonna negotiate with us. Um, you say to yourself, there's no point putting assets in the UK, I'll try and move my price a little bit, I'll suck up the margin for a while, and then it's going to come back as the pound-euro relationship changes. So I, I think, again, you're, you're sort of in, in, in watching mode currently. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're in the services business, that's quite different. I mean, I think then you, it's typically an asset light model. I think manufacturers on the whole are going to be concerned about where they place assets, which is, I think, why you're seeing some companies go, ooh, I'm not too certain right now. But I think services industries can you know, easily, easily carry on as before because they're earning their income where their costs are, whereas to some extent one of the things for manufacturing are very often earning the income not where the assets are placed, and that's your currency risk. 